All right, guys, so you want to learn how to save money in 2020, especially during this quarantine. So I'm going to tell y'all what I've been doing in 2020. Well, actually, I've been doing some of these tips before 2020, but it's carrying on through 2020, which will help you all save some money, get in your bag, have some money left over by the end of the year so you can start splurging a little bit more and doing things that you really want to do, right? Right? Am I wrong or am I? I think I'm right. If you're interested in this video, go ahead and hit that like button right now. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Go ahead and prepare to share this video with a friend and hit that notification bell so you can be notified every single time I make a video like this. So let's get on into it. Nice guy with a cold shoulder. You'll be cool, but I don't know you. Wrote a flower and I'm off the potion. Give me superpowers and I won't stop. To the bank roll on super massive. Big bank for the space chatter. Okay, so the first thing you need to make sure that you have is two to three accounts. Not just one primary account, but let's say two to three accounts. Me, per se, I have two accounts. I have my main bank, and then I have a credit union that I'm a part of. I'm a part of Bank of America, and I'm a part of Navy Federal Credit Union. Now, the reason why I say you need to have two accounts because you need a main account that you know either most of your stuff is coming out of and coming into, and then the second account that will possibly have a savings or account that other things are coming into that you don't really have to look into that much. A main account where you like monitoring and knowing exactly what's coming out or you're paying your bills out that account, you have your, you know, your main check from your job going into that account, you know exactly what's going there, and then that second account is going to serve as just in addition to things like savings, to things like um, other income that's coming in. For example, with my main account, that's the account that I'm using for my job. My job is depositing my check twice a month in, in that account and I know exactly how much I'm getting. I'm on salary so I know exactly what I'm getting with the taxes taken out every single month. Um, also, I use that account to pay my bills, so I know exactly how much will need to be coming out of that account every single time. Also, that account is used for groceries, expenses, and stuff like that. That's what that account is for. Now, my second account, my credit union, is for my savings account. So, I actually have a percentage of my check from work going into that credit union. So a percentage of that check is going into that credit union automatically into savings before I even see it. So whatever is going into my main account is after that percentage have been taken out and is going into that second account. I don't have to see the separation. It just automatically happens. So with that being said, my credit union account, I don't really touch it that much. I use it more as a savings account. Um, but also like my YouTube AdSense revenue goes straight to my credit union. Um, for photography, if I'm doing a photography gig or videography gig, I don't deposit that money into my main account. I deposit that money into my federal credit union account. So that way I can kind of keep track of what's going on. So any outside revenue that I'm getting will go into that credit union. And then if I need to transfer it into my main account for some reason, I can do that. I have it linked. I also have a credit card from that credit union because the credit union trusts, you know, its members. So that credit card is huge, a huge amount. So just in case something pop off, Boom, I can swipe it and use that card to pay something off. Um, so yeah, that's the main reason why I have two accounts. I think you should at least have two to three accounts just for those reasons right there. It will help you save, it will help you manage your finances a little bit better. Now, moving on, the best way I can say that I've been saving is spending less than what I make. So I break it down as far as month and weeks. So I know how much I'm gonna spend for the month and I know how much I'm gonna spend every two weeks. Usually, if it doesn't fit within, you know, those time frames, I really think about, do I need this item? Do I really need this item and will I need it for the future? If it's just a pair of shoes, most likely I probably won't buy it unless I have it in my credit union account and I'm like, okay, I have some money to splurge. I use that credit union account money to buy some shoes or some clothes if I need it. Or my main account might have some extra money in it, I might use it. But if I don't have the money, I'm not going to spend it. I won't even use a credit card on it because I, that's not my money. I'm not going to spend something that's not my money. The credit card will make it seem like it's your money because it has your name on it, because you you you, you got approved for it, so it seems like your money. They'd be like, you have $3,000 to spend, but it's not your money. You still have to pay that back and they'll tack interest on that. So they'll be making money off you spending your money that's how it work, you know, no, nah, we're not doing that. So I only use my credit card when it's a dire emergency 
or I know I will pay it back and I'm just trying to get the rewards. So for example, if I'm if I know I have the money to buy some shoes, instead of spending my money, I'm gonna spend the credit card and then I'm gonna get the rewards on it and then I'm gonna pay that back as soon as I get home. As soon as I get home, I'm gonna transfer the money from my bank account to that credit card so that balance can be paid off because I was gonna use my own money anyway. That's how you should use credit cards. So I don't spend any money that I don't have. So that way I know exactly what I'm getting myself into because them credit cards will dive you, get you, you know, get you in a hole. When I was younger, when I was younger and I first had those credit cards, I was swiping, 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 and I'm still paying some of those off. But my main credit card that I use for emergencies, I don't touch that. And the cards that I'm paying off, I don't touch those at all either. Oh, your boy got out of college and you know, I was like, swipe, 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 no, swipe, 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 I'm trying to get on a professional game but I really wasn't getting on a professional game. Next thing in order to save, you need to have a minimal mindset. You don't need to reach for the stars when it comes to certain items. So let's say you like, ooh, the new iPhone is coming out next week. I need to get that. Do you have the money to get that? Or is your iPhone working, your current iPhone working? I still have the iPhone 10, y'all. I still have the iPhone 10. And you know why? Because it works. Maybe the battery is going dead a little bit quicker, but it's still fast. The camera's still decent. It still make calls, it still make texts. I'm still able to do business. I'm still able to set up, you know, photography shoots, emails. I'm still able to do my day-to-day -day on my iPhone 10. So I didn't need to upgrade to 11 or 11 Pro or I might upgrade to the 12. Some people do this upgrade cycle too much. You know what I'm saying? Just to have the best of the best. Instead of living a minimal life, you know what I'm saying? Minimal, live minimal. You don't need the newest clothes, you don't need the newest J's, you don't need the newest Adidas, the Yeezys, you don't need that as long as you have your essentials. If you look at my wardrobe, you, you will see like my essentials are very, very minimal. Like I have black shirts, white shirts, t-shirts, jean jackets, some flannels, some sweaters, and, 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 and some sweatshirts, you know what I'm saying? I swag out with those, like I have multiple shoes, but I don't need all this different designer and all this in order to you know, make my swag and my apparel look good. So live minimal, you know what I'm saying? Live within your means, guys. Um, another thing I would say to help you save is buy what you need and not what you want. I want a new car, I want a new house, this and that. But are you in the financial circumstances and situations where you can get those things or do you just want them? You don't need them, you want them. You know what I'm saying? If you just drop your phone, it cracked, and it costs you just as much to get a new phone as it is to upgrade, you might as well upgrade because you need that. But if your phone is doing perfectly fine, you don't need it, you want it. You know what I'm saying? If you already have a bunch of J's, you already have a bunch of shoes, you don't need the newest J's to come out. You don't need it, you just want it. So try to figure out what you need and what you want. Everybody always mesh them together. Oh, well, if you if you want it, you might as well get it because you only live once. Yes, yes, yes. But at the same time, if you don't have it, don't don't put yourself in that situation. Another way that I save is whenever I go shopping, I look at the cheaper options first. I don't automatically look at the most name brand thing, like especially grocery shopping. I don't look at the most common name for groceries all the time. Some some things I need to get the name brand, but some, most of the time, I'll look at the most efficient way of getting that item. Just like when I went to Publix the other day, the cashier was like, wow, you got a whole bunch of stuff for like $105. I was like, yeah, because I know exactly what I need and I know exactly the brand that I need in order to keep me in this range. My buggy was filled up. My buggy was filled up with snacks, a little bit of meats, and fruit. I ain't gonna tell y'all what I bought. But anyway, my buddy was kind of filled up, you know what I'm saying? She was like, wow, you 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 did good for 105. I was like, yeah, because I'm buying Publix brand stuff. I'm buying the cheapest brand stuff. Make sure you know whenever you go shopping, especially for groceries, look at the cheaper options first. See if you can deal with, you know, the limitations, if there are any limitations to the cheaper option. And then if not, then you look at the higher price option or the name brand option when it comes to like shoes and stuff of course i'm not buying no non-name brand shoes um but you know when it comes to groceries and you know 
essentials like house goods and stuff like that it's cool to try to find you know the cheaper route first and then if that if you don't think that'll work or isn't strong enough then you go towards that you know that that expensive route and you know i think that's it for me you know what i'm saying um that's really how i save and i hope these tips help you out whether you're grown whether you're young you're in high school you're in college you're just graduating you're older than me i don't know hopefully this advice can help you and hey I will catch y'all on the next video. If y'all want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know in the comment section. If you leave a like, that would definitely let me know. If you leave a comment, that would definitely let me know. So I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace.